Slackware. Slackware is a Linux distribution created by Patrick Bokerding in 1993. Originally based on soft landing Linux system, Slackware has been the basis for many other Linux distributions, most notably the first versions of SUSE Linux distributions, and is the oldest distribution that is still maintained. Slackware aims for design stability and simplicity and to be the most Unix-like Linux distribution. It makes as few modifications as possible to software packages from upstream and tries not to anticipate use cases or preclude user decisions. In contrast to most modern Linux distributions, Slackware provides no graphical installation procedure and no automatic dependency resolution of software packages. It uses plain text files and only a small set of shell scripts for configuration and administration. Without further modification, it boots into a command line interface environment. Because of its many conservative and simplistic features, Slackware is often considered to be most suitable for advanced and technically inclined Linux users. Slackware is available for the i832 and x86 64 architectures, with a port to the ARM architecture. While Slackware is mostly free and open source software, it does not have a formal bug tracking facility or public code repository, with releases periodically announced by Vokerding. There is no formal membership procedure for developers, and Vokerding is the primary contributor to releases. The name Slackware stems from the fact that the distribution started as a private side project with no intended commitment. To prevent it from being taken too seriously at first, Vokerding gave it a humorous name, which stuck even after Slackware became a serious project. Slackware refers to the pursuit of Slack, a tenet of the Church of the Subgenius, a parody religion. Certain aspects of Slackware graphics reflect this, the pipe that Tux is smoking, as influenced by the image of J. R. Bob Dobbs head. A humorous reference to the Church of the Subgenius can be found in many versions of the install.n text files, which indicate the end of a software series to the setup program. In recent versions, including Slackware release 14.1, the text is ROT13 obfuscated. Slackware was originally derived from the soft landing Linux system, SLS, the most popular of the original Linux distributions and the first to offer a comprehensive software collection that comprised more than just the kernel and basic utilities, including X11 graphical interface, TCP IP and USCP networking and GNU Emacs. Patrick Bokerding started with SLS after needing a Lisp interpreter for a school project at the then-named Moorhead State University, MSU. He found Clisp was available for Linux and downloaded SLS to run it. A few weeks later, Bokerding was asked by his artificial intelligence professor at MSU to show him how to install Linux at home and on some of the computers at school. Bokerding had made notes describing fixes to issues he found after installing SLS and he and his professor went through and applied those changes to a new installation. However, this took almost as long as it took to just install SLS, so the professor asked if the install disks could be adjusted so the fixes could be applied during installation. This was the start of Slackware. Bokerding continued making improvements to puzzles, fixing bugs, upgrading software, automatic installation of shared libraries and the kernel image fixing file permissions, and more. In a short time, Vokerding had upgraded around half the packages beyond what SLS had available. Vokerding had no intentions to provide his modified SLS version for the public. His friends at MSU urged him to put his SLS modifications onto an FTP server, but Vokerding assumed that SLS would be putting out a new version that included these things soon enough, so he held off for a few weeks. During that time, Many SLS users on the internet were asking SLS for a new release, so eventually Bookerding made a post titled Anyone Want an SLS Like 0.99 PL11A System? To which he received many positive responses. After a discussion with the local sysadmin at MSU, Bookerding obtained permission to upload Slackware to the university's FTP server. This first Slackware release, version 1.00, was distributed on July 17, 1993 at 0, 016 and 36 seconds, UTC, and was supplied as 24 3 and a half inches floppy disk images. After the announcement was made, Bokerding watched as the flood of FTP connections continually crashed the server. Soon afterwards, Walnut Creek CD-ROM offered additional archive space on their FTP servers. The size of Slackware quickly increased with the addition of included software, and by version 2.1. Released October 1994, it had more than tripled to comprise 73 1.44M floppy disk images. In 1999, 
Slackware saw its version jump from 4 to 7. Slackware version numbers were lagging behind other distributions, and this led many users to believe it was out of date even though the bundled software versions were similar. Vokerding made the decision to bump the version as a marketing effort to show that Slackware was as up-to-date as other Linux distributions, many of which had released numbers of 6 at the time. He chose 7 estimating that most other distributions would soon be at this release number. In April 2004, Patrick Bokerding added x.org server packages into the testing slash directory of current as a replacement for this free 86 packages currently being used, with a request for comments on what the future of the X window system and Slackware should be. A month later, he switched from spree 86 to x.org server after stating that the opinions were more than 4 to 1 in favor of using the x.org release as the default version of X. He stated the decision was primarily a technical one as Free86 was proving to cause compatibility problems. Slackware 10.0 was the first release with x.org server. In March 2005, Patrick Volkerding announced the removal of the GNOME desktop environment in the development change log. He stated this had been in consideration for more than four years and that there were already projects that provided a more complete version of GNOME for Slackware than what Slackware provided itself. Volkerding stated future GNOME support would rely on the community. The community responded and as of October 2016, there are several active GNOME projects for Slackware. These include, Cinnamon, Blackware, Droplin GNOME, Mate, and Slack Mate. The removal was deemed significant by some in the Linux community due to the prevalence of GNOME in many distributions. In May 2009, Patrick Vokerding announced the public, development, release of an official x86-64 variant, called Slackware 64. Maintained in parallel with the IA32 distribution. Slackware 64 is a pure 64 bit distribution in that it does not support running or compiling 32 bit programs, however, it was designed as multi lib ready. Eric Hamilliers, one of the core Slackware team members, maintains a multi lib repository that contains the necessary packages to convert Slackware 64 to multi lib tonable running of 32 bit software. Hamlier started the 64-bit port as a diversion from the pain of recovering from surgery in September 2008. Vokerding tested the port in December 2008, and was impressed when he saw speed increases between 20 and 40 percent for some benchmarks compared to the 32-bit version. To minimize the extra effort of maintaining both versions in parallel, Slackware's build scripts, called Slack builds, were slowly transitioned to supporting either architecture, allowing for one set of sources for both versions. Slackware 64 saw its first stable release with version 13.0. Between the November 2013 release of 14.1 and June 2016, Slackware saw a 31-month gap between releases, marking the longest span in release history. During this time the development branch went without updates for 47 days. However, on April 21, 2015, Patrick Bokerding apologized on the change log for the absence of updates and stated that the development team used the time to get some good work done. There were over 700 program changes listed on that change log entry, including many major library upgrades. In January 2016, Bokerding announced the reluctant addition of Pulse Audio, primarily due to Blues dropping direct ALSA support in v5.x, while various other projects were in turn dropping support for Blues v4.x. Knowing some users would not be happy with the change, he stated that bug reports, complaints, and threats can go to me. These changes culminated in the release of Slackware 14.2 in June 2016. The design philosophy of Slackware is oriented toward simplicity, software purity, and a core design that emphasizes lack of change to upstream sources. Many design choices in Slackware can be seen as a heritage of the simplicity of traditional Unix systems and as examples of the KISS principle. In this context, simple refers to the simplicity in system design, rather than system usage. Thus, ease of use may vary between users, those lacking knowledge of command line interfaces and classic Unix tools may experience a steep learning curve using Slackware whereas users with a Unix background may benefit from a less abstract system environment. In keeping with Slackware's design philosophy, and its spirit of purity, most software in Slackware uses the original configuration mechanisms supplied by the software's authors, however, for some administrative tasks, distribution-specific configuration tools are delivered. There is no formal issue tracking system and no official procedure to become a code contributor or developer.
The project does not maintain a public code repository. Bug reports and contributions, while being essential to the project, are managed in an informal way. All the final decisions about what is going to be included in a Slack War e release strictly remain with Slackware's benevolent dictator for life, Patrick Bookerding. The first versions of Slackware were developed by Patrick Bookerding alone. Beginning with version 4.0, the official Slackware announced files list David Cantrell and Logan Johnson as part of the Slackware team. Later announced statements, up to release version 8.1, include Chris Lumens. Lumens, Johnson and Cantrell are also the authors of the first edition of Slackware Linux Essentials, the official guide to Slackware Linux. The Slackware website mentions Chris Lumens and David Cantrell as being Slackware alumni, who worked full-time on the Slackware project for several years. In his release notes for Slackware 10.0 and 10.1 Bokerding thanks Eric Hamilliers for his work on supporting USB, PCI, and card bus wireless cards. Starting with version 12.0 there is, for a second time, a team building around Bokerding. According to the release notes of 12.2, the development team consists of seven people. Future versions added people. Since version 13.0, the Slackware team seems to have core members. Eric Hamilliers gives an insight into the core team with his essay on the history of Slackware development, written on 3 October 4, 2009, shortly after the release of version 13.0. Slackware's package management system, collectively known as PC Tools, can administer PC Tool, install, install PC, upgrade, upgrade PC, and remove, remove PC packages from local sources. It can also uncompress, explode PC, and create MacAPC packages. The official tool to update Slackware over a network or the internet is Slack. It was originally developed by Peter Punk as an unofficial way to keep Slackware up to date. It was officially included in the main tree in Slackware 12.2, having been included in extras slash since Slackware 9.1. When a package is upgraded, it will install the new package over the old one and then remove any files that no longer exist in the new package. When running upgrade, it only confirms that the version numbers are different, thus allowing downgrading the package if desired. Slackware packages are tarballs compressed using various methods. Starting with 13.0, most packages are compressed using XC, based on the LCMA compression algorithm, utilizing the TXC file name extension. Prior to 13.0, packages were compressed using XIP, based on the deflate compression algorithm, using the TGZ extension. Support for BZIP2 and LSMA compression was also added, using the file name extensions, TBZ and TLZ respectively, although these are not commonly used. Packages contain all the files for that program, as well as additional metadata files used by the package manager. The package tarball contains the full directory structure of the files and is meant to be extracted in the system's root directory during installation. The additional metadata files, located under the special install slash directory within the tarball, usually include a Slack DESC file, which is a specifically formatted text file that is read by the package manager to provide users with a description of the packaged software, as well as the doings.sh file, which is a post-unpacking shell script allowing creation of symbolic links, preserving permissions on startup files, proper handling of new configuration files, and any other aspects of installation that can't be implemented via the package's directory structure. The package manager maintains a directory, slash var slash log slash packages, where each package installed will have a corresponding install log file that lists the package size, both compressed and uncompressed, the software description, and the full path of all files that were installed. It also maintains the directory slash var slash log slash scripts containing aldoings.sh files to allow proper removal of installed sim links. When a package is removed or upgraded, the old install logs and doings.sh files are moved to slash var slash log slash removed underscore package and slash var slash log slash removed underscore scripts respectively, making it possible to review any previous packages and see when they were removed. The package management system does not track or manage dependencies, however, when performing the recommended full install, all dependencies of the stock packages are met. For custom installations or third-party packages, Slackware relies on the user to ensure that the system has all the supporting system libraries and programs required by the program. Since no official lists of dependencies for stock packages are provided, 
If users decide to install a custom installation or install third-party software, they will need to work through any possible missing dependencies themselves. Since the package manager doesn't manage dependencies, it will install any and all packages, whether or not dependencies are met. A user may find out that dependencies are missing only when attempting to use the software. While Slackware itself does not incorporate official tools to resolve dependencies, some unofficial, community-supported software tools do provide this function, similar to the way APT does for Debian-based distributions and YUM does for Red Hat-based distributions. They include there are no official repositories for Slackware. The only official packages Slackware provides are available on the installation media. However, there are many third party repositories for Slackware. Some are standalone repositories, and others are for distributions that are Slackware based but retain package compatibility with Slackware. Many of these can be searched at once using pkgs.org, which is a Linux package search engine. However, Mixing and matching dependencies from multiple repositories can lead to two or more packages that require different versions of the same dependency, which is a form of dependency hail. Slackware itself won't provide any dependency resolution for these packages, however some projects will provide a list of dependencies that are not included with Slackware with the files for the package, commonly with a dep extension. Due to the possibility of dependency issues, many users choose to compile their own programs using community-provided Slack builds. Slack builds are shell scripts that will create an installable Slackware package from a provided software tarball. Since Slack builds are scripts, they aren't limited to just compiling a program's source, they can also be used to repackage pre-compiled binaries provided by projects or other distributions repositories into proper Slackware packages. Slack builds that compile sources have several advantages over pre-built packages, since they built from the original author's source code, the user does not have to trust a third-party packager. Furthermore the local compilation process allows for machine-specific optimization. In comparison to manual compilation and installation of software, Slack builds provide cleaner integration to the system by utilizing Slackware's package manager. Some Slack builds will come with an additional file with metadata that allows automated tools to download the source, verify the source is not corrupted, and calculate additional dependencies that are not part of Slackware. Some repositories will include both Slack builds and the resulting Slackware packages, allowing users to either build their own or install a pre built package. The only officially endorsed Slack Builds repository is slackbuilds.org, commonly referred to as Zubo. This is a community supported project offering Slack Builds for building software not included with Slackware. Users are able to submit new Slack Builds for software to the site and, once approved, they become the package maintainer. They are then responsible for providing updates to the Slack Build, either to fix issues or to build newer versions provided by upstream. To ensure all programs can be compiled and used, any required dependencies of the software not included with Slackware are required to be documented and be available on the site. All submissions are tested by the site's administrators before being added to the repository. The administrators intend for the build process to be nearly identical to the way Slackware's official packages are built, mainly to ensure vocoding was sympathetic of our cause. This allows Slack builds that vocoding deems worthy to be pulled into regular Slackware with minimal changes to the script. It also prevents users from suggesting Volkerting to change his scripts to match Sabo'sbo provides templates for Slack builds and the additional metadata files and they encourage package maintainers to not deviate unless necessary. Two Slackware team members, Eric Hamiliers and Robbie Workman each have their own repository of precompiled packages along with the Slack builds and source files used to create the packages. While most packages are just additional software not included in Slackware that they felt was worth their time to maintain, some packages are used as a testbed for future upgrades to Slackware. Most notably, Hamilers provides KTown packages for newer versions of KDE. He also maintains Slackware's multi-lib repository, enabling Slackware 64 to run and compile 32-bit packages. Slackware's release policy follows a feature and stability-based release cycle. In contrast to the time-bound, for example, Ubuntu, or rolling release, for example, Gentoo Linux, schemes of other Linux distributions. This means there is no set time on when to expect a release. Vokerding will release the next version after half eels a suitable number of changes from the previous version have been made and those changes lead to a stable environment. As stated by Patrick Vokerding, it's usually our policy not to speculate on release dates, 
since that's what it is, pure speculation. It's not always possible to know how long it will take to make the upgrades needed and tie up all the related loose ends. As things are built for the upcoming release, they'll be uploaded into the current tree. Throughout Slackware's history, they generally try to deliver up-to-date software on at least an annual basis. However, between Slackware 14.1 and 14.2, there was more than a two-year gap between releases. From its inception, other than 2014 and 2015, Slackware had at least one release per year. Release activity peaked in 1994, 1995, 1997 and 1999, with three releases each year. Starting with version 7.1, June 22, 2000, the release progression became more stable and tended to occur once a year. Since then, the only years with two releases were 2003, 2005 and 2008. Slackware's latest 32-bit x86 and 64-bit x86 underscore 64 stable releases are at version 14.2, released on June 30, 2016, which includes support for Linux April 4, 2014. Vokerding also maintains a testing slash developmental version of Slackware called Current that can be used for a more bleeding edge configuration. This version will eventually become the next stable release, at which point Vokerding will start a new current to start developing for the next release of Slackware. While this version is generally known to be stable, it is possible for things to break, so current tends to not be recommended for production systems. Currently, Slackware has no officially stated support term policy. However, on June 14, 2012, notices appeared in the change logs for versions 8.1, 9 9.1, 10.0, 10.1, 10.2, 11.0, 11 and 12.0 stating that, effective August 1, 2012, security patches would no longer be provided for these versions. The oldest release, version 8.1, was released on June 18, 2002 and had over 10 years of support before reaching EOL. Later, on August 30, 2013, announcements were made on the change logs of 12.1 and 12.2 stating their EOL on December 9, 2013. It was stated in the change log entries that they had at least five years of support. On April 6, 2018, versions of 13.0, 13.1 and 13.37 were declared reaching their EOL on July 5, 2018. It was stated in the change log entries that they had at least seven years off support. 13.0 had been supported almost nine years, there had been no announcements from the Slackware team on when any versions of Slackware from 14.0 and up will be EOL. While there have been no official announcements for versions prior to 8.1, they are no longer maintained and are effectively EOL. Historically, Slackware concentrated solely on the IA32 architecture and releases were available as 32-bit only. However, starting with Slackware 13.0, a 64-bit x86 underscore 64 variant is available and officially supported in symmetrical development with the 32-bit platform. Prior to the release of Slackware 64 users wanting 64-bit were required to use unofficial ports such as Slam 64. Slackware is also available for the IBM S-390 architecture in the form of Slack-390 and for the ARM architecture under Slackware ARM, originally known as the ARMED Slack. Both ports have been declared official by Patrick Bookerding. However, the S-390 port is still at version 10.0 for the stable version and 11.0 for the testing-slash-developmental version, and has had no updates since 2009. Also, on May 7, 2016, the developer of Slackware ARM announced 14.1 will be EOL on September 1, 2016 and development of current will cease with the release of 14.2. However support for 14.2 will be maintained for the foreseeable future. The EOL announcement for 14.1 was added to the change log on June 25, 2016. In July 2016, the developer of Slackware Arm announced that the development and build tools had been enhanced to reduce the manual effort involved in maintaining the Arm port, and proceeded to announce that a 32-bit hardware floating port was in development. The port was released in August 2016 in current form. Slackintosh was an unofficial port of Slackware to the New World Macintosh's PowerPC architecture. Slackintosh's final release was 12.1 and is no longer being maintained.
Island, the latest stable version of Slackware can be ordered from the official Slackware store as a 6 CD set or as a single dual DVD. The CD set is targeted at the 32-bit IA32 platform but also runs on 64-bit x86 underscore 64 processors in 32-bit mode. The DVD contains both the 32-bit and 64-bit versions. Slackware ISO images for the CD set and the DVD can also be downloaded for free via BitTorrent or from various FTP and HTTP mirrors. The distributions of the ports for the ARM architecture and for IBM S-390 are neither available as CD-DVDs nor as ISO images, but can be downloaded. Slackware S-390 installs from a DOS partition or from floppy disk. Slackware ARM does not distribute ISO files because most ARM devices cannot boot from a CD or a DVD. Instead, it is installed off a network, using DOSI boot and a TFTP boot server or from a mini root file system. Slackware ARM can also be installed on a PC running Camu using the same technique. DistroWatch shows a decreasing but still substantial interest regarding Slackware. In 2002 the Slackware page was ranked as number 7, but dropped to number 10 by 2005. In 2006 it reached number 9 whereas since then being constantly below the 10 most popular pages. In 2010 it had been listed as number 11, in the years 2011 and 2012 as number 12, and in 2015 as number 33. However, since DistroWatch only tracks visitors to the various distributions pages, they state their ranking doesn't always correlate with the usage of the distribution, only the popularity of that distribution on their site. Because of this, their rankings should not be used to measure the market share of distributions. Many people who are already familiar with a distribution may have no need to visit DistroWatch, so their trends could be applied more toward either new or potential linear users who are curious about a distribution. Currently, there is no official method to track the usage or number of installs of Slackware. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.